Today in the news, Nvidia pukes out GPUs, a beef gets squashed, and Netflix fast forwards. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Nvidia. They just unveiled their new GPUs, the 1650 and 1660 Super, and I gotta say, after watching a few reviews, Nvidia's 16 series lineup is pretty messed up. Or at least it is for now, since the new models are supposed to coexist with the current lineup. So why am I saying it's messed up? Well, performance scaling and especially pricing is all over the place. So it starts with the, uh, the old 1650, it has 896 CUDA cores and 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. We already knew that. Moving up though is the new 1650 Super, and while we don't have any benchmarks for it, it's sure to be a beast. It moves to the TU116 chip, the same as the 1660 Ti, it has 384 more CUDA cores, higher clock speeds, and 4GB of GDDR6 with an effective clock of 12GHz. Nvidia claims it will be 50% faster than the original 1650, and with all of these upgrades, it probably will. No word on price for this model, but it will definitely be between one. 49 and 219. Just above that card is the GTX 1660, the old one. It has 1408 cores and 6 gigabytes of GDDR5 at $220. And here is where things get pretty messed up. The new arrival, the 1660 Super, has the same amount of CUDA cores at 1408, but the move to 6 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory clocked at 14 gigahertz makes it a contender for even the 1660 Ti. In all of the benchmarks I've seen from Gamers Nexus, Paul's Hardware, and others, it hovers at around 5% less performance than the more expensive 1660 Ti. And the price is even better since it's $50 less than the 1660 Ti and only $10 more than the regular 1660. Nvidia essentially killed two cards in their lineup with one addition. Talk about two birds with one stone. In some cases, we even see the 1660 Super match the Ti's performance exactly. And I'm guessing that it's because because while it has 128 less CUDA cores, the effective memory clock is higher than the TI's at 14 gigahertz for the Super, as opposed to 12 for the TI. Now the 1650 Super has not been benchmarked yet, but with the added CUDA cores and the GDDR6 memory, it too will likely match the card above, aka the 1660. Now Nvidia could discontinue the 1660, it would give breathing room for the 1650 Super to take a little more space, but at that point, the 1660 the TI is in a tough spot since the Super is right up its tail. Anyways, the lineup is really confusing at this point. What do you guys think? In some Microsoft news, the company has just announced an upgrade path for Xbox One to Project Scarlet. Now, this is specific to their Xbox All Access service bundle, which is available in the US, UK, and in Australia. The service includes one of the variants of the Xbox One, Game Pass, and Xbox Live Gold. All of that for $20 to around $30 a month. So if you sign up for a membership before the end of the year, you will be eligible for an upgrade after 12 to 18 months, depending on the package that you choose. The only thing is, once you upgrade, you have to resubscribe for another 24 months with uh, Project Scarlet. So technically, buying any of these separately rather than in a bundle, like with uh, Xbox All Access, it's more expensive. But I can't help but feel like if you subscribe now to get the upgrade, you'll be paying for that Xbox One X and Scarlet for years. Moving on, back in August, we saw global foundries go after a lot of companies for patent infringement on various manufacturing process. While it was mostly focused on TSMC, we saw companies like Nvidia, Apple, Google, Asus, and others get named. This could have caused import bans on specific products, but we mostly thought that this was more of a smokescreen for a settlement or something similar. TSMC then proceeded to counter sue global foundries. Well, it looks like it was just a smokescreen since both Global Foundries and TSMC dismissed all patent lawsuits and have come to an agreement with a 10-year cross-license for the patents. This license will extend not only for all existing patents, but also for all of the newer ones issued uh, for the next 10 years. I don't know about TSMC, but this is a great deal for Global Foundries. Maybe we'll see them come back into the uh, 7 nanometer and up processes. 
In Netflix news, they made a move that I've been waiting for, but that the actors and directors are absolutely furious about. So when I watch a show or a movie, and I don't really like the acting, but I'm interested to see where the story goes. Well, I use the skip 10 second button. That makes a movie like Time Trap or a show like Raising Dion much more bearable to watch. And that's where Netflix comes in to save me with a brand new fast forward button for the Android app. That way, I don't miss any dialogue and I can enjoy the movie a little bit faster. You can also play in half speed, which is great for when you want extra details on the uh, VFX. Now the filmmakers are not pleased about that since they say that it will be destroying the experience. But I think that's unfair. If I really want to watch your movie in regular speed, I will. I mean, we already have the skip button. What do you guys think? Do you like yay or nay on the fast forward button? Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any comments or questions, you can leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. To subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Oh, here's a new beat.